Hello little fishes. Here I am back in my storytelling shed, Reverend Ruth, and uh, I'm here to bring you a bonfire night, little fishes. I'm recording this in the shed as you can see, but outside it's very dark. It's quite late at night, it's half past six in the evening. There's a reason why it's dark outside and you'll be able to see that a bit later on. But first I need to get my fish out of my little fish's bag. Here they go, clinking as usual. I'm going to put them on my table. Not sure if you can actually see the table or not, but that's where they're going. My little white fish there, that lovely. And my three fish, which came all the way from Spain, my friend Wendy. One, two, Three. All of those fish remind me of little fishes. So, shall we sing the little fishes song? I wonder if you can remember how it goes. The words are going to be up on the screen so you'll be able to sing along with um, your grown-ups in your house. But let's sing together the little fishes song. Do you remember sometimes we used to flap these around in church? Maybe you could make your own while you're at home. That would be good. Little fishes in the sea, little fish like you and me, swimming, swimming every day, thanking God in every way. With a splash, splash here and a splash, splash there, here a splash, there a splash, everywhere a splash, splash, swimming, swimming every day, thanking God in every way. That's lovely. Thank you, little fishes. I wonder if you've ever looked at the trees at this time of year and thought how the leaves looked, look like they're on a fire. They look like they could be flames. If you look on the streets and pavements at the moment, you might see leaves that look like this, red or yellow, orangey, I've been walking uh, Casper on the pavements and I've seen lots of red and yellow leaves on the floor. They've been blown off the trees. Can you see this picture though? That's a tree. But look, it's got red leaves and orange leaves and yellow leaves. If you use your imagination, they could almost be flames. It could look like a big bonfire, a tree that looks like it's burning. I love seeing the leaves turn colour on the trees. I love November. I love fireworks and I love bonfires. I like this time of year and it might have something to do with the fact that it's my birthday at the end of the week. So when I see the leaves changing colour and I hear fireworks banging and zooming and I can smell bonfires, I know my birthday isn't far away. So today I want to talk about bonfires and fireworks and God, of course. Now, when we see fireworks lighting up the sky and listen to the banging and the whizzing and the popping, they're not set off so that we can especially think about God. It's not like Easter eggs at Easter or singing Christmas carols. Both of those things tell us something about Jesus and his life. But do you know, I think that the flashes and the rumbles of the fireworks and bonfires can remind us of God. And they can remind us about a very special man who God loved very much. And God had a job for this man. I'm going to tell you part of this man's story today. Well, actually, I'm going to tell you two stories. One about a tree that looked like a fire and another about a mountain that sounded like fireworks. The character in the story is Moses. He had lots of adventures. 
Now then, little fishes, I wonder if you can remember me telling you the story about a baby hidden in the bulrushes. We had this story just before we had to stop going into church. We all gathered in the room at the back of the church hall and I told you all about Moses whose mum put him into a basket and set him out on the river and he was rescued by an Egyptian princess. Well, that was Moses. Moses was an Israelite and the Israelites loved God and God loved the Israelites. And the Israelites were slaves to the king of Egypt, the Pharaoh, and they had a very hard life. Moses grew up in the palace so he could see that the Israelites were being treated really badly by the slave workers. One day when he was a grown-up he was so cross that he hit one of the slave owners and it killed him. This meant that Moses had to run away. He couldn't stay in the palace because Pharaoh was so cross with him. And so he went to live in the country. He met someone and got married and he became a shepherd. He looked after sheep and he led a quiet life until one day he was out with his sheep near a mountain and he saw a burning bush. Now this wasn't just a tree with red and orange and yellow leaves on it, but this was actual flames. But the tree wasn't burning away. It was like a miracle. And then God spoke. Moses could hear God speaking to him. Moses was a little scared. God told Moses that he should go back to Egypt and rescue the slaves and bring them back to the mountain where he was. Moses didn't really want to do this. He didn't think he was the man for the job, but God eventually persuaded him. Moses listened hard and then he did what God asked him to do and he trusted that God would help him. And he went to Egypt and he did lead the slaves into freedom. That's one of the stories that I wanted to tell you today. We're going to go inside in a little while now and uh, we're going to do a craft activity. Uh, so we'll go into the warm and I'll show you what the craft activity is. And then later we'll come back out to the shed and I can tell you the next story. Hello little fishes. So I've come inside back into my kitchen. It's a little bit warmer in here than it was outside in the garden. So I thought we could um, make a picture this week, um, a picture of a tree that looks like flames, a burning bush, a little bit like the trees that we see on the roads all around Redditch with the red and the gold and the yellow leaves. So I had a look around my house and I couldn't find very many um, paints that were bright red, which would have been good, but um, I found this glittery paint, which is like a pink, I've got um, some silver. I don't think I'm going to need the silver paint, but I've got some uh, yellow glittery paint and some gold glittery paint. And I've put some blobs on my little palette there. And then off the internet, I got a picture of a tree. See the tree trunk? This one's already got some leaves on, but I don't think the leaves look very bright. They don't look like it's a burning tree, does it? So what do I need? I've got the paper and I've got the paint. I haven't got a paint brush. Hmm. Wonder what could I use? Broccoli. Do you like to eat broccoli? I like to eat broccoli. And when my little boy, who's now a big boy, when when my when my son was little. He used to think he was eating green trees. I'm going to experiment because I've been told that if you dip the broccoli into the paint, it looks like leaves on the trees. 
little bit of the gold and dab, 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 dab. Oh, let's do a little bit more dab in there. Can you see what's happening? I think it does look like there are little leaves all over the tree. It might even look like the tree's on fire. That's some of the gold. Of course, you don't have to use these colours. You could have a rainbow tree. You could use whatever colour paints you've got at home. Let's put a little bit of the, of the red, the pinky red. Where will I start with this, I wonder? Oh, that's a bit of a big blob. Let's go around here. Oh. I think this is working quite well. I'm sure that you can make it work at home. I'm sure somebody will be able to help you do your broccoli painting of a burning, burning bush. And... What haven't I used? I haven't used this colour, have I? This pale yellow. I'm going to have a little bit of a... I'm going to dab some of it off here. And let's go again with the dabs. Dib, dab. Dib, dab, dib, dab. All around. All around. Like I say, you could use red, you could use blue, you could use green, or you could just go with oranges and yellows. I'm going to hold it up so you can have a look at how it's starting to look. Can you see? I'm going to do a little bit more just to finish it off, but I think that this is looking pretty good for a little piece of broccoli, don't you? Dib dab. Dib dab dib dab. Uh, can you imagine what Moses must have thought when he was watching his sheep, just taking his care of his sheep, minding his own business, and then all of a sudden a tree that looked like it was on fire, and then from the tree, God speaking to Moses and giving him quite a scary job to do to go back into Egypt. That's the gold one. To go back into Egypt and to rescue the Israelites who were being treated so badly. He must have been scared, but he must have been brave too. And you know what? He must have trusted God a lot. It's a good thing to trust God. God promises that he'll be with us forever. He kept that promise by sending Jesus and uh, when Jesus came to earth he told his disciples about loving one another <clears throat> he told his disciples and anybody who would listen all about God and how much God loves us it's really important to keep listening to the stories that Jesus told and to remember how to use those in our everyday life Jesus had some special rules to live by. They're the rules that God gave to Moses. And in a little while, when I go back out into my storytelling shed, I'm going to tell you the second story about Moses. And that's a story about a mountain that was a little bit like a, bomb, like a firework party and some very special rules that God gave to Moses so that the people would know how to live well and happily together. And there's my finished painting, my tree that looks like it's a burning bush. I'd love to see yours. So please, if you could, uh, if you, when you've painted your painting, you can just send you, ask your grown up in your house to uh, take a picture of it and send it to me. I'd love to see them and maybe next time I can put some of them up on the screen so you can see what everybody else has been doing. 
it's time for me to go and get cold and chilly outside. Come on, come with me. So here we are back in the shed. Did you um, enjoy that craft activity? I wonder if you're going to, um, how big your picture is going to be of your burning tree, whether it's going to be more red or orange. I look forward to seeing some of them. If your grown-ups can send me pictures, that would be great. So I promised you a second story. Well, here's the second story. When Moses rescued the people from slavery, he brought them back to where the burning bush was. He brought them to the bottom of this very special mountain. It was called Mount Sinai and people called it God's holy mountain. Often the mountain was covered in cloud and there could be thunder rumbling and banging and there was often smoke and there was lightning. All of those things made the people realise that God was mighty and God was big and God was loud and God was magnificent. God was powerful. It's the closest thing that we've got to a firework display in the Bible. Do you remember that God had spoken to Moses from the burning bush and said, bring my people to me? And so Moses did. I wonder how the people felt when they could hear the sounds of bangs and they could hear the crackles and the pops and the smoke. They must have been quite scared. Now, only Moses was allowed to go to the top of the mountain into the cloud. And it was there that God spoke to Moses again. It was there that God told Moses about the rules that he wanted his people to live by. So Moses wrote them down, not with a pen because he didn't have a pen, not with a pencil, not with a paintbrush, not with a piece of broccoli. He had some tablets of stone and a hammer and a chisel and he chiseled the rules down. Ten ways to live according to God. God said, there is only one God and you should worship no one else but me. God said, don't try and make an image of me because I am invisible and holy. God said, don't misuse my name because it is precious and powerful. God said, set aside one day a week to rest and worship me. God said, parents should be honoured and respected because family life is important. God said, vows and promises shouldn't be broken because love is God's gift. God said, don't steal what doesn't belong to you. God said, don't kill other people. God said, don't tell lies about people. And God said, don't spend your lives wanting what others have. They're good rules to follow, God's rules for God's people. And although God spoke to Moses a long, long, long time ago, they're still important rules for us to follow because we are God's people today, aren't we? At Little Fishes, we often hear stories about God the Father and we hear stories about Jesus, his son. And we've heard the story of the Holy Spirit. Do you remember the Holy Spirit came as a flame too? God uses fire and flames a lot. God's fire works today. God's fire works through his Holy Spirit. God's fire works right around the world when people follow his commandments and love one another. In a little while, 
we're going to watch a firework. I'm going to ask my husband James if he can sort it out for me. Shall we go and ask him? I hope you enjoyed watching that firework go off. I certainly did. Tonight, uh, after it gets dark, you might be able to listen and watch some fireworks. I don't want you to be frightened by them. Um, just enjoy the, the bright lights in the sky. And maybe when the fireworks go off, they can help you to pray. Think about the rockets. They make a loud noise. Whee! Bang! Pop! Bright colours and pretty patterns. It's like a prayer of praise when we tell God how pleased we are that he loves us. Our prayers can shoot up high for everyone to see and hear. Prayer and praise. Some prayers are like Catherine wheels. They're the fireworks that go round and round and whoosh and whoosh, whoosh. They're like prayers that we say every day or every week. We say the, word, say the same words over and over again, but they still shine bright and sparkle before God. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. It's a bit like when we sing the Little Fishes song every week. Just because we've sung it once doesn't mean we shouldn't sing it again. And some prayers are like sparklers. Personal prayers between us and God, they shine just as brightly as the big prayers of praise, but they feel much more personal. Prayers that are between us and God. So let's pray. Dear God, we say thank you today for you being an amazing God. We want to praise you loudly, just like a firework. Wee! Bang! Pop! We say thank you for the good things, for our friends and families. We thank you for them as they shine brightly in our lives, like a firework and a bonfire. We thank you for the stories in the Bible that teach us about you and tell us how to love one another. And we thank you for the little fishes everywhere, young and old. And we pray that everyone will be kept safe until we meet again. Whoosh! Wee! Bang! Pop! Amen! I'll be back to tell you some more stories from the shed in a few weeks time but for now I'm going to sing the goodbye song to you. Goodbye boys, goodbye boys, goodbye girls, goodbye girls, lovely to see you, lovely to see you at Little Fishes 
at little fishes. See you next time. Bye.